Hey guys, this is going to be soldering up the BMS. The BMS takes quite a while to solder up, at least for me. So I'm just going to go through a time lapse, talk about it a little bit, and we're going to have a little conversation about the actual connections because this was a little bit confusing to me when I first started doing battery builds. So we need to solder up all the sense wires for the BMS. And this is going to involve going to every single battery cell. So the batteries are in 5P right now. There's five batteries in parallel, and we're going to connect each cell up to each other. So that's essentially taking a voltmeter to each individual cell. And you need to know the exact voltage of each cell because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be balancing these cells to each other as you charge them. If they're gonna be four volts, they all need to be four volts. If they need to be 4.1 volts, they all need to be 4.1 volts. So that's what we're doing here. Alright, so I finished up with the soldering and now we have all of them connected. So we have that JST connector on top where we're going to connect up the BMS. We have our battery negative, we have our battery positive and every single connection in between that. Now we need to validate that each one of these is correct. You do not want to plug into the BMS if you messed up one of these connections. So we need to take our voltmeter and we're going to check all of these connections individually. And you don't want to short them out as well. They're very close together, so you don't want to be shorting out these connections. But you also need to make sure that they're going to be correct. So I'm going to stick that pin right down there onto that battery negative, And then we're going to go through individually through each pin and make sure we're getting 3.6 volts, 7.2, 10.8, 14.4, and so on. Okay, once we are finished with checking that and it all works and makes sense, we are going to wrap it with captain tape or with polyamide tape, and that's going to be our heat barrier. Um, polyamide tape is kind of like electrical tape, except it has a very high heat resistance and it's electrically resistant so you'll see in this next section we've wrapped it in that tape and then we'll just go over the connections and I'm connecting the positive and the negative leads as well so we can see that. Here's the battery with some polyamide tape on it so it's a little bit safer to handle around everything. You're not going to short the connections as easily. You can see I have my positive lead soldered on, so in between each battery. No, I think I did it on each battery for the positive lead. Okay, going over the BMSs one more time. Negative lead goes to zero. The next connection goes to 3.6, and then the connection after that goes to 7.2, etc. as you go all the way down to that positive wire. One important thing to remember is that you have to have that connected for the BMS to measure voltage properly. This is something that'll come up later because I didn't know that. <laughs> All right, so we have the negative lead right here. In between each cell, I put a blob of solder and we're going to connect up our negative lead. 12 gauge is plenty big for what I'm going to be pulling and that's gonna connect up to that battery negative side on the BMS. On the BMS side, we have our battery negative, or B minus, is going to connect, connect to that B negative connection. And then the BMS is going to split that into two separate connections. So we have our positive connection, and we have our XLR charge connector, and we have our XT90, the one that's in yellow. The XLR connection is going to connect positive to the positive that we split out. The negative connection is going to go, is going to connect on to the BMS. 
onto the C negative port or the charge negative like that. Then we have our discharge wire and we are going to connect it to the XT90 anti-spark on the negative side and then there is going to be a P minus or power minus on the BMS and that's what we're going to connect it up to. We have my BMS all connected up, we have the charge negative, we have all the negative wires connected up, everything's ready to rock and roll, but as you can see, as I'm testing these connections, I'm not getting 47.76 volts. I'm getting different connections. For my charge, I'm getting 46 volts, and for my discharge, I'm getting 42 volts. You can see the, the two numbers there. I'm just super confused why we're only getting 42 volts. And the answer really is you need to connect that JST connection right there. So what I decided to do is to just, I have three BMSs that are 48 volts. So I thought, well, maybe this BMS is bad. <laughs> I've dropped it a couple of times um, off the top of this battery pack onto it. So I thought, well, maybe I shorted something out. Maybe, maybe something's broken. So let's rewire this to a new battery pack. So that's what I'm doing here. I stacked the new BMS on top of the old BMS, and I'm literally just soldering those connections together because I am completely baffled as to why the voltage is coming out six volts lower, like two cells, I'm missing two cells. So I went and rechecked the JST connection to make sure all those connections were solid. They were totally solid. My battery negative, my battery positive were showing 47.76 volts. So I'm thoroughly confused as to why this isn't working. And I've come up with the uh, theory that the BMS is bad. So I'm literally just taking all those negative wires, again, taking that B minus wire, connecting it to the B minus uh, connection, going to be pulling off the old BMS because this one I think is broken and we're gonna do some testing. Okay, I'm, I finally decide, hey, let's just connect this JST connector. It's super tight. So now that everything's connected up, we're gonna test it again. 
and we're going to get 47 volts, which is what we want. And I was super relieved, but I wasn't sure if this discard charge connection was going to be the same. But there we go, 47 point, I believe it's 76 volts, you can't really tell. Um, it's 47 volts, so okay, everything's connected, BMS is working properly, now we can test the charge and make sure it's charging right. I did take apart the charger to make sure that it was, um, the polarity was right, but really we're just wiring up the battery and going from here.
All right, it's finished. We have our XLR connection on, we have our XT90 connection on, we have all the padding around it. Turned into a pretty big battery once we added all that padding. Just used some tape and the rest of my shrink wrap to make it work, and there we have it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.